Hello everyone, and welcome back to Film Book Review, an official YouTube channel of Film Book. Featured in Google News, IMDb's News Desk, and a member of the Critics' Choice Association, Film Book is an entertainment industry news website that reports on the film and television show industries in the United States and across the world. Today on Film Book Review, I will be reviewing the film Linoleum, a movie that screened at the 2022 South by Southwest Film Festival. Linoleum is written and directed by Colin West and stars Jim Gaffigan, Rhea Seahorn, Caitlin Nacon, Gabrielle Rush, and Amy Hargreaves. This is a Linoleum movie review and there will be spoilers. If you like our movie reviews, please like this Linoleum film review as that helps us out with YouTube's algorithm and consider subscribing. Once subscribed, click the bell notification box and you're all set. Please also consider becoming one of our patrons on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash film book. And now, the Linoleum Movie Review. This film may accurately be described as a three-ring quantum circus of overlapping timelines in the life of a family through the eyes of one man. A kaleidoscope of symbolic melancholy. Linoleum launches literally with a bang. A blazing red corvette falls upside down from the sky onto a suburban street where a middle-aged man, Cameron, stands at his mailbox. Cameron doesn't hurry to the flattened vehicle. Instead, he trudges over timidly, curious rather than shocked or alarmed. The mustachioed driver lay half out of the wreckage with no sign of injury. A perfunctory exchange, and Cameron continues trudging into his ticky-tacky suburban home. This, the first of several outright bizarre incidents that the life of Cameron the family man clues that his life is not exactly on a steady track. From that point, however, events unfold, or so it seems, in ways unexpected for a dysfunctional family in the final throes of disintegration with some notable oddities. His wife and rocket engineer, Aaron, seeks a divorce even though they still sleep together. Their daughter, Nora, a high school student, is deciding whether or not she's a lesbian. No one takes much notice of the youngest, Sam, about 10 years old, who takes almost no notice of them. Then, another crash landing. A launch module of a satellite in the backyard. The house gets cordoned off and condemned, but Cameron can't bring himself to stay away and soon returns to the homestead, bringing with him along his demented father at the suggestion of the nursing home where he resides. Fortunately, Cameron now has plenty of time to realize a lifelong, yet unfilled dream of becoming an astronaut. Because unfortunately he lost his job as the host of a failing science show for kids to Kent, a PBS celebrity hired to boost the show's ratings, Kent now lives across the street with his teenage son, Mark, who latches onto Cameron, encouraging him to fix the crashed launch module and explore space anyway. Director Colin West plays with timelines throughout. He drops into the narrative what the audience takes to be flashbacks, but what is actually Cameron maneuvering through a hall of mirrors of sorts, where the distortions reflect parts of his own experience. And by the end, the mainstay of the plot device is clear about what West was aiming at. The last moments of Cameron's life as he looks back, with his regrets and exaltations. What started as painfully melancholic becomes exquisitely nostalgic. Thus, Cameron begins with a series of losses. His job to Kent, his marriage to a divorce, his home to a freak accident. He sees himself as 10-year-old Sam, the son of the impossibly demanding, abusive Kent, who later tries to run down his son Mark for disobeying, but dying himself, crashing his Corvette. Then there is Aaron, years before the divorce, co-hosting Cameron's kids show and obviously loving every minute of it, and finally chooses him over a prestigious job. Together they fix the rocket, together they blast off, Cameron as the demented father with co-host, co-pilot Aaron at his side. It's tricky, but West tries his best to pull no sucker punches while steeping the film in symbolic surrealism. He somehow manages to avoid a convoluted plot and pulls it about as tight as he can be, and the result is very clever. It can't exactly be called dream logic, however, grounded as it is in the alternate, more substantial narratives, bolstered by first-rate performances all around that gives it real-world strength and substance. It does, 
however, provide a nice balanced contrast. Occasionally, there are a few peculiar logistical issues that may provoke further discussion, i.e. leading to experts the notion of an Electra complex when Mark marries Nora. At the end of the day, linoleum finds its real strength in emotional terms, and one finds it remarkably satisfying. And that brings us to the conclusion of this linoleum movie review. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it below in the comments section. If you liked what you heard during this review, please like this video and subscribe to this channel. Please also visit and subscribe to our podcast channel at Film Book Podcast and our trailer and reaction channel at Film Book Trailers. Thank you for viewing, and you can watch one of these reviews next.